welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there Astro Ventures, welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventure. And tonight I'm here with Sasquatch Mike and uh, we are shooting with our Sky Guiders and the uh, Star Adventure out here and um, recently on our Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR, and if you're not a member, we'd love to see you over there. But recently, uh, there was one of the members over there that was bringing up the question about, you know, what mount to get, and I decided to uh, take a moment tonight and talk to Mike because, like I said, he shoots regularly with the Star Adventure, myself with the Sky Guider, and kind of go over the pros and cons of each one of them from two people that regularly use them. So, uh, Mike, which model of Star Adventure are you using, sir? The 2SI, I believe, the one with Wi-Fi built into it. Okay, excellent. And then over on my side, I'm using the Sky Guider Pro. And with the Sky Guider, uh, there hasn't been a newer version in who knows <laughs> how long. So, I'm using the current, the historic, I think it's all the <laughs> same, okay? So, um, with the Sky Guider and Star Adventure, so we're gonna kinda go through some pros and cons and some points with each one of them. Um, Sky Guider, uses a reticle for polar alignment, what do you got? A reticle as well. Reticle as well, okay. So both of them are set up that way from the get-go, okay? Uh, let's see here as far as powering them. Now on mine, I have a rechargeable lithium ion battery. And yours? Mine runs off of, I believe, eight AA batteries. But you can also plug in an external battery into it and run off that if you would like. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, for myself, although my configuration isn't that I can run within uh, an external power source, or, or maybe it is kind of the equivalent, in the event that I run out of power, I can certainly use a, uh, a power pack like you would use to recharge your phone, and it will actually power it and uh, charge it up. So apparently that power draw to use isn't very high. So I, I guess both of them have kind of those backup resources for it. Now, one of the things that the Star Adventure has that I don't is the app. Tell me about that, Mike. So the app, I'm not too familiar with it. I've tried using it once, made my system crash, I had to do a full reset on it. But what I understand, you can use it for your inner velometer. You plug in the cable from your camera into the mount. You can set up your exposures that way. And I'm sure it does more than that, but I just don't mess with it. Okay. So it sounds like there's some capability there, but maybe some software bugs possibly? Possibly. And it's been probably a year, year and a half since I tried using it. So there may be updates on it. Things might be worked out. Okay, so it kind of sounds like, you know, if we were, you know, throwing checks back and forth, um, you know, so far I think we've been about equivalent, both of us getting those checks. Yep. But I think with this one, we'd give you the check for having that, that you know, that, that ease of an app, but maybe only half a check because... You didn't get it to work, Yeah, huh? I couldn't get it to work. Now, uh, those of you that are, are, that are at home that are using the app, please, if you have it working or you found the workaround or the solution for it, please put that below in the comments so that way there we can share it as well as I would encourage yeah. you go into our, our Facebook group. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, share that knowledge. Um, Let's discuss the, the polar alignment. Now, I know <laughs> both of us have that capability to, to use a reticle with our systems, but um, reticles, would you agree with me, Mike, that using a reticle for something millions of miles away is pretty imprecise? 
very imprecise and difficult if you're tall like myself. Yeah, uh, Sasquatch Mike here is uh, much taller than he <laughs> looks on the camera here, and, and I'm probably much shorter. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, let me uh, let me find out then from you. What was your solution? Because I know for you, trying to get down on the ground and get underneath that thing and use that reticle was a bear. Uh, not to mention not getting any younger. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what did you move to? What was your solution? I went to the ASI Air Mini and wow, it's a life changer. Okay, now, now why in regards to polar alignment? Why? Because I don't have to crouch down no more. I hook it up to my camera, take a shot. It tells me how to plate solve where I need to take it to much simpler and easier on the body. Excellent. Now over on the SkyGuider Pro side, I can also do the same thing. I connect to the camera the same way that Mike does and uh, take the shot, rotate it 60 degrees, yeah. same over on the Star Adventure, and we can both polar align using the ASI Air. So, yep. you know, as far as giving checks, I think we, would you agree we both equally get the same I check agree. there? I agree. Okay. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to kind of pull out a, a trump card on you there. <laughs> um, one of the big advantages, and, and if you've watched uh, any of the videos for any amount of time, is that the SkyGuider Pro uh, has the capability for you to be able to pass a camera through the center of it. It's called the iPolar. And with that iPolar, uh, it allows you to do a polar alignment off of a laptop computer. So it's not as portable easy as the ASI Air because how do you get your information from your ASI Air? Um, iPad. Off an iPad. I do the same thing when I'm using it. I use an iPad and, and as a backup you can always do it with your phone. Yep. But in both situations, either one of us, SkyGuider Pro or the Star Adventure, if we're using that iPod, excuse me, if we're using the ASI Air, I use a Pro, he uses the Mini. Yep. Um, to reconfirm your polar alignment, we have to come off of target, correct? Correct. Yeah, and that's because the the ASI airs require you to do a, a vertical shot and then a 60 degree rotational for it. And this is where I said kind of that trump card with the iPolar. The iPolar allows me to recheck polar alignment without coming off of target. And so that's really nice because I don't have to reacquire. And, and I'm going to throw this over to Sasquatch Mike because he's seen me use that with the iPolar. And, you know, he's been using the ASI Air and he's been using the reticle. What do you think of the iPolar? I think all of them should have it or something similar. Um, there is nothing available for the Star Adventure to put a camera in the reticle to do what he can do with his. Yeah. And I, I would say. Between these two, um, between these two systems, and, and you know they're, they're pretty amazing. Personally, I think the um, iPolar kind of pushes the Sky Guider kind of over the edge versus the Star Adventure. However, over on Star Adventure in stock form, you guys got something that's much better than I got over in the Sky Guider, and what's that? It is the base. Yeah. Tell it me is, about it. It is more metal, more robust, a lot better than one that comes with his, but there is still slop in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the SkyGuider Pro, it's well known. Um, there is, it's, it's really got a lot of inherent slop when you're trying to do your alignment and, and using my arm as an example, when you can do this. Okay, that translates to millions upon millions of miles of inaccuracy. And one of the things is that that's often mentioned as an upgrade is the Star Adventurer's base because, you know, while my slot might be like this, his is, you know, maybe like this. Quite a bit more precise, would you agree? I agree. And then, um, so both of us though, um, because I had to ditch my base because my base is <laughs> horrendous. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, and his wasn't exactly good. So both of us, we opted for the William Optics base. Now, 
Yeah, that is a night and day difference. Yeah, and with that night and day also comes the uh, the chunk of money, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but well worth it. Yeah, and it was one of the things, I, I was the first one to add in the William Optics base, that, that wedge, and all slop is gone. I mean, it's just gone. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah. And so I initially did it, and when I purchased mine, I want to say it was 280 American dollars at the time when I purchased it. And Mike, I know he he saw it on mine, and that was what I think finally pushed you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because it's a considerable chunk of change. And huh? I want to say I paid around 230 for mine. Oh, did you? I, if I remember correctly. Okay. If he remembers correctly, well, he might have got a sale or something. But, but yeah. regardless, it's a hefty chunk of money. But it's one of those things until you actually see it. I don't think you realize how nice it really is. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. And the thing is, there's nothing worse than trying to get onto a star, and just the simple weight of the equipment is causing <laughs> millions of miles of slop, right? Yep. Yeah. Now, um, with the two of them, I know I can also, uh, and, and this might be throwing Mike on the spot because I, I don't know if he knows, uh, with the Sky Guider Pro, I know I can do guiding for right ascension because we you know neither system has declination um, but I know I can do guiding for right ascension do you know if the star adventurer does it does as well yes. okay so with that you can use the ASI air and a guide scope and camera and both of them will allow you to do guiding okay um, so Mike anything else that you would want to add Hmm. No, I think we not, covered everything. I think we covered most everything, the okay. basics on it. Okay. Now, if you had to choose between the two of them, okay, you're somebody at home looking at this, um, where do you think you would go? Now, before you answer, my thought is, is I think between the two systems, although I love the base, and some people use the Star Adventure base as an upgrade to the Sky Guider base, which I want to say, and we'll put it on the screen, I, I think your base is $60, um, which is quite a bit cheaper than the 280 I paid for my William Optics base. Um, but it is still nonetheless an upgrade. Yep. But between the two of them, I think the iPolar and the fact that I can do um, polar alignment checks on the fly pushes me to recommend the Sky Guider over the Star Adventure. What is your thought? I would agree with that. Um, I probably would have gotten this got the Star Adventure. You mean sorry, Sky Guider? Sky Guider Pro. Uh -huh. But was, I bought my equipment during COVID, so I was very limited on what I could get. So I got what I could get. So the availability yep. being so an issue. If I did all over again, I wouldn't get the Star Adventure. Okay, and so let me ask you then, um, again for people at home, um, you agree you would go with the Sky Guider Pro? Sky Guider. Uh, with the iPolar. Yeah, with the iPolar, yeah. or you'll be doing the same stuff. Yeah, otherwise yeah. we're the same. Yep. Now, as far as the base, let me ask you then, um, because I did not use the Star Adventure base at all, but I did see it had quite a bit less slop. Somebody purchases Sky Guider Pro, goes with the iPolar, okay. Uh, would you recommend doing the Star Adventure base? Why or why not? Or should they go for the William Optics? Even though it's a considerable chunk more, why, why not? Thoughts? Um, if you could afford the William Optics base, I would say go with that. Okay. But for 60 some odd dollars for the Star Adventure, it's a better upgrade than what's stock on that one. So uh, on the Sky Guider. On the Sky Guider. So if you, if money's not an issue, get the William Optics. Okay. Um, so so let's let's do this here. Sixty dollars I can do. The Sky the uh, William Optics is quite a hefty chunk for me to save. Should I hold off and save, 
or should I just settle for the 60 and, and do the star adventure? Is, is, is the I lack would, of slop worth waiting? I would saying? wait. Yes, I would wait. Okay, so Save ultimately. Yep. Okay. But if, hands down, it was just never going to happen, do the star adventure star base? Star adventure base, yep. Okay, there you go. Um, now, one of the things is, and uh, with that, that uh, the, the Sky Guider Pro, pricing, approximately. Uh, I, I I was looking, and I believe Star Adventure is like 418 the last time I looked, and I want to say that the last I looked, the Sky Guider Pro without iPolar was like 398. Uh, one of the nice things is, and Sasquatch Mike is here, his father. Mike Sr., he went with the Sky Guider Pro initially and then later on did the iPolar upgrade. And so, if and coincidentally, the iPolar Sky Guider Pro combo at the time of filming was 609, so about 200 more than just the reticle equipped Sky Guider Pro. So, you could always do the iPolar later. When your father got his, Mike Sr., did he find it to be that difficult of a do-it-yourself? No. There's a couple of videos on YouTube he watched and he did it all himself. Okay. And I want to say it was like $240 upgrade Okay. To get that camera. Okay. So, well worth it? Yeah. 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 And uh, Mike Sr., older in age, um, you know, vision gets harder and things and as well as getting down there underneath that reticle i think yeah. your father really likes that eye yep. polar over he does so there you have it between the two i think and, and mike you can tell me what your thoughts are my thought would be is if you come upon a star adventure for a really killer price grab it. it yeah yep if we're looking at having to purchase new or about new go with the sky guider yeah i agree okay. with that and then um if you can't afford to swing it with the ipolar at the time would you agree get the sky guider and then upgrade. eventually upgrade do we want to talk about the star adventure gti at all okay um yeah we will but let's save that for another video where we can discuss some other mounts Okay. okay. Sounds so, good. but yeah, that that Star Adventure GTI, that's a sweet setup, and can you know, it's a sweet setup too. So, yeah. okay, excellent. Well, if you have any questions or comments on our discussion here between the Star Adventure or the Sky Guider Pro, or or where you think maybe we got it wrong, or maybe where you might be able to help, you know, Sasquatch Mike out with the uh, the app. Please put it in the comments below. You know, we do this for, for learning purposes. So until next time, I wish you clear skies, uneventful nights, and please like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share this video out. And again, love to see you over at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR.